Congress. Great. So I would like to welcome you all today to about two years in the making to long years in getting this lab up and running. And when I think about this lab, I think about when I was in school and what science instruction looked like for us as children. For many of us, it was you sit, there's a textbook, you read it, you answer questions at the end, and then there's a test a few weeks later, and that was what science education was like for many of us growing up in elementary school. And so to look at this lab today and to think about the kind of science program that our students are going to experience, it's wonderful to see that, most importantly, science is going to be what scientists actually do, which is experiment and grow and get dirty and ask questions and look at things and maybe things don't grow and things fail and ask more questions and figure out why. Um, and I think that's the beauty of this lab was when we first started to conceive of this idea several years ago. Um, and so today we're very honored to finally formally conduct our science lab so that all of our students and future students at 183 get to experience a really enriching, well-rounded science curriculum that also stresses environmental and sustainability, which are two very important topics in our world today. Um, and so I want to give just a few thank yous before we do some more speeches today. Uh, I first want to thank uh, Councilmember Dan Gallos for his undying support for PS183. This is just one of the many gifts that Ben Kalos' office has provided us through participatory budget, through CASA grant, through multiple funds that he has given us to support our vision for our students here at 183. I also have to thank Michael Expert, our SLC president. <laughs> Michael was very prominent in making sure this item got on the participatory budget ballot several years ago, and working with our PTA community and other schools to get them to vote for this project. And so this $600,000 that was given to this lab was because of a strong community response. And a lot of that had to do with our PTA at the time and for Michael's work in making sure this got on the ballot and it was a priority. Thank you, Michael, very much. And I also have to thank um, the former principal at the time, I can't take credit for this lab, and it goes to Tara Napoleon, who is not here today, but who was the principal at the time, and who did work with Michael to make sure that this was a partnership that we wanted to build with New York Sunworks and introducing us to Sunworks. And so I want to thank Tara and also Kim Banks, our assistant principal, and Luann Popper, our undying parent coordinator in the back. Thank you so much for all your work and helping support everything. <laughs> Sorry. I want to make sure I thank Michaela, our science teacher. You're no longer teaching in 301 upstairs. You're downstairs in this beautiful new lab. And uh, we're so glad that you get to work with our kids every day. So thank you for taking on this challenge. Because it's not easy and it's a new curriculum for you to learn and a lot of different moving pieces that you're responsible for. So thank you for that. Okay, well, um, I also want to thank our PTA president, Shannon and Andrew, who are here today to join us. Um, I want to thank our former PTA president, Tom Hill, this year. Uh, we also want to thank our PTA set board, our school leadership team members, some of our teachers from the school leadership team are here today. Raise your hand, SLT members. Yes, thank you for coming. I also want to thank our staff who were able to come on their lunch break and sneak in. Raise your hand, teachers. Yes, thank you for coming today to be a part of us. The members of our tech board who are standing up here. I don't know if you Thank you for coming today. Um, I also want to thank Eric, our custodian, and Megan from New York Sunworks. We have so many wonderful meetings with the SCA every two weeks about this lab, and you are always there. And thank you for making the time to support us and making sure everything was up to spec, done in a timely fashion and done in a way that was safe and successful for our kids. So thank you so much for giving your time. Um, I also want to thank, of course, our fantastic superintendent, Donaldo. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for stopping by today. Thank you. What's um, that? Sorry. And I also want to, most importantly, I want to thank our students for being patient. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
And I also want to thank uh, from our SCA, Mike Marisola. Thank you very much for coming, Mike. Um, please give my apologies to all the SCA members for my emails <laughs> and incessant emails. Sorry. But thank you, Mike, for always responding. Um, and on that note, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, and I also want to thank, we have one other special guest today, um, Dr. Ishmael Neal, who is here from Memorial Sloan Kettering. Thank you very much for stopping by. Um, as you know, um, the major hospitals in New York City are actually very well connected to 183 because of the students and parents who come from all over the world to study at your institutions and your hospitals and to become future doctors and scientists. And so their kids come here, and so we're very grateful to have you in our neighborhood. So thank you for stopping by. And on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Council Member Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing all the uh, thank yous. Councilmember Ben Kalos, and I love science. I think science is fun. Who here thinks science is fun? Can I, can I, can I hear it? So science is incredibly fun, and uh, as, as Principal Witter was talking about, science doesn't always work when it's in a textbook. It's really hard, but now you, you can actually see the science, you can watch it grow, and kids who live here in an urban environment are going to actually be connected with where our food actually comes from. And I think I saw something floating around over there in terms of getting to see some of the food you can make that we can grow right here. And uh, so, so is, is this basil we grew right here? So this has basil that was grown right here. And so that's, that's what school should be all about. It should be getting to be in a school environment where you have modern technologies that just inspire kids to do great things and think about how they can experiment in their lives and in their homes. Um, I, I had the opportunity to go to a public school. It, it was a uh, school in the Bronx that also had science in its name uh, called Bronx Science. <laughs> and the technology and the tools um, in, in our science lab, we, we, we we had Bunsen burners, and we Excellent. had yeah. <laughs> we blew things up. Yes, we, we, we got to we got to create chemical reactions that would sometimes be uh, endothermic uh, or exothermic, which in that case would result in perhaps minor explosions. Uh, but uh, it, it, we had all these tools. We we had stress tests for building bridges out of balsa wood. We had a, a CNC fact machine. We and, and we also had. This was way back when, in 1994, we had the internet. Uh, we were one of the first schools to have this thing called the internet. We had three computer labs, and we had one computer, no, two computers, that had access to the internet in color, uh, uh, because everything else was just a terminal, and then on those machines in color, uh, we had a killer app called Mozilla, and Mozilla is what you got to use if you wanted to access this other cool thing, called uh, World Wide Web, which was like Gopher, but with pictures. Uh, and uh, I, 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 there's a lot of older folks here who know what I was talking about, which is kind of scary. Uh, but I just, we, we <laughs> uh, some, some folks here are not old enough to remember some of this stuff. Uh, but I just want to uh, thank our uh, principal, uh, Martin Woodard, uh, our superintendent. We're so lucky to have her, Donalda Chumney. Uh, and uh, from the CEC, uh, Dr. Ishman Neal, uh, who's from Memorial Sloan Kettering, which is literally across the street, and uh, Manuela Zamora, Executive Director of uh, NYT Sunworks, which is where we got all this great equipment. And I appreciate getting some credit here, but uh, honestly, all I did was delegate my authority and my job over to the community and say, every year you get to spend a million dollars. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Michael Extract to come up. I think how long? How many years have you been a uh, PB delegate in a row? Uh, I'm not sure. But but we've done it like three times. Yeah. And every time he's been a PB delegate, he's put a project on for the school, and every single time they've won. And uh, I, I will say, not only did the parents turn out, but uh, the sixth graders turned out. Uh -huh. And uh, we brought a mobile poll site here, and we went to the 11-year-old sixth grade class and said, what are you voting for? 
And I think all the kids, you remember what number it was on the ballot that year? The kids just said, number nine. <laughs> and we said, okay, what, what's that? What are you voting for? And they're like, number nine. <laughs> uh, and honestly, that's probably as much as most folks know. And uh, it was good that they were able to participate. And so it was $600,000. Uh, and uh, this puts our investments in STEM in the district at my uh, 12 or so public, sorry, 18 or so public schools in the district to about four million dollars over the past five and a half years. <laughs> and in 2017, you were able to get 1,514 people to vote, and that resulted in us getting an electric upgrade for the building for this room so you could actually have this equipment because otherwise it wasn't going to happen in a building that is over 100 years old, is that correct? Yeah. Over 100 years old. Uh, we needed to move heating units to accommodate the new materials, uh, all the new cabinets and furniture and all that, that's all new, the flooring is new, and then of course all the hydroponics equipment, smart port, all the technology here that turned it into a science lab. And so we're so very grateful for all of that. And uh, this school has already won some awards. Uh, in fact, a, a blue ribbon award. But now that we have a science lab, uh, there, there's, I, I'm expecting great things from the students here. Uh, there is the, I believe it is the SALT award that folks get usually, that's the precursor. Is that the award that folks get before they get the other prize, the Nobel Prize? Or that? <laughs> Lasker Prize. Sorry, the Lasker Prize. So we're hoping to at least get a handful of students who graduate to get Lasker Prizes, followed by at least getting one graduate from the school, if not many more, to be Nobel laureates. Uh, and uh, perhaps we can have a, a, a young woman go on to be a scientist and get that Nobel Prize, as well as a young man, and just make sure that we are well represented as Nobel laureates. I will say that my, my, my school, the high school I went to, my public school, I think we have 12 Nobel laureates, so I'm just saying we, we need some competition <laughs> there. Um, and I just want to thank everyone involved. There, there are so many people on the very long laundry list, and it really takes a village. And I want to thank the PTA, because whether it was the previous PTA or the current PTA, uh, the PTAs are very, very crucial to making schools uh, stronger. And we've actually already worked with some of the members of the PTA before they became PTA leaders to secure pre-K on the Upper East Side. Uh, this year is the first year that we actually had enough seats for pre-K on the Upper East Side where every single parent in the neighborhood got a seat in the neighborhood. And uh, we're, we're, uh, Shannon was there on Fox 5 advocating for those seats and then we got them. So I just want to thank all of you, thank everyone for being here, and uh, I can't wait to come back for our next groundbreaking and ribbon cutting because I know there's more to come, and I can't wait to see what's going to be proposed for participatory budget. So thank you, and I've got you on. Um, sorry, I have some notes, but I'm a little, a little ill, so bear with me. Uh, so first I just want to say that when I first um, got involved with the SLT, uh, I, this, this kind of project was very near and dear to my heart. I have a sort of background in really caring about the environment, volunteering for environmental uh, organizations that work with the U.S. Green Building Council. And I was really interested in seeing us do something in sustainability. So there were already some parents here, and our former principal, Tara, was interested in doing something green. We looked at a lot of green groups we run around. And so really this credits back to several years ago. I mean, these projects, these participatory budget projects, can take so long. Or like our gym, I think, for 10 years. So it's really a testament to families over many years. There were some wonderful members of the SOP years ago that were involved that aren't necessarily here now but just sort of pay it forward. So I want to thank them. Um, anyway, the, I guess the actual process, I really want to thank. I know you just sort of turned over to the community, but at the same time, you give us the opportunity to do it. And it's an amazing thing. And the, the really amazing thing, though, is this PF23 community, where people, I mean, the families are just so engaged and so caring. 
Okay. Uh, and you said something about how they didn't know what they were voting for. Actually, the STEM lab people got really excited about it. They knew that one. Maybe the HVAC, they were like, oh, this is number nine. <laughs> no, we still got that HVAC. <laughs> well, we but I just, the people in the community, I mean, yes, I sort of spearheaded it, but it wouldn't be without the community and how close it is and how, I mean, families, we had families out in good weather, bad weather, out in the rain in Carl Scherz Park, handing out little flyers, my poor child, reading. And, um, and I still, one of the really beautiful moments was one of our kindergarten classes, maybe more than one, they went and walked around the block holding the little participatory budget in time saying, vote for us, <laughs> just on the day of the participatory budget. It was just amazing. So just so many, I mean, I could, I could go on, I'm sure you don't want me to. I guess to just finish, I want to say um, that uh, we're also grateful for our neighbors outside the school, obviously, without them, this wouldn't happen. And then just, again, to come from the show, there's so much support for school. Um, and having the science lab here makes it, makes Peter 23 one of, I think, which helps keep us one of the best schools in the city, and even the country, as you mentioned, because we're really good. So thank you for supporting all the schools in our district. I'd like to introduce our fantastic superintendent, Mr. Melvin Chane. Thank you, Martin. Wow. I want to thank you again. You're a wonderful thought partner and a true advocate for all of us. And parents, um, without you, this obviously would not be possible. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'm really touched by this because I think that, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the intellectual benefits and the next generation learning standards and the way that this type of curriculum and opportunity for kids to interact with these particular plants and the way that they're being grown is going to um, support their learning overall. Um, I think um, there's another cognitive benefit and a lot of research is behind the neuroscience around interacting with nature and the way that our brains um, refresh themselves when we have the opportunity to activate our parasympathetic nervous systems. And I think that um, this school is already a very calm and happy place for um, but I think that um, the tone of the room is surely different when there are so many plants in it and kids are experiencing that, right? And the waterfall too. Yeah, yeah there's something very, very refreshing about it. Um, the other thing I think that's really important to notice that students are tending these plants and having the opportunity to pour love and affection into something and watch it grow. And that's an opportunity that so many of our students throughout the city don't have. And here, that's going to be a possibility for every child in every grade on a rotating cycle. Um, and that's a huge a huge thing that all adults owe kids to the, to acquaint them with the world that we live in and also to help them understand that with energy, um, their own investment, things will grow. And then finally, the last thing I think is that I'm noticing this light and how special it is and that, you know, in the right circumstances, um, all things can grow and all people can grow. And that's a really important life lesson to carry, that we can really um, make a difference in the way that we um, the way that we acquaint others with what we want them to learn and how we support them, especially children, but also adults. And so New York Sunworks um, brings all of these uh, powerful resources and physical products, but the, potentially the most beneficial part of this partnership is the professional learning that comes with the partnership and the curriculum that students are exposed to. And so um, I'm really grateful to you all for being those people for us, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what seeing what develops here, and how we can work together now in the future. Thank you. I'm really honored to be able to introduce Dr. Neal. Ushka is a new um, appointee, but she's the borough president, uh, Gail Brewer's appointee, to our Community Education Council this year. And she is also uh, the director of, of adult professional learning, um, essentially, right? You're, you can tell them your exact job title for um, this incredible medical center that you have right across the street in your neighborhood that many parents here are employed with. And so she's joined us today. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you for everyone being here. So I'm wearing three hats today. First is as your neighbor in the community working at MSK and knowing how many of my colleagues sent their children here. And so we are absolutely thrilled that the school is just getting better and better and better. 
Second, as a member of District 2 and on the Community Education Council, we love seeing another school that's flourishing in this way, that's embracing new ways of learning. And then third, as a parent um, in District 2, I am insanely jealous <laughs> of how phenomenal this is and what you were able to accomplish in this school to give your children another way to learn and another outlet for their energies and their creativity. And as I was thinking about what I wanted to say up here, I was looking into some inspirational quotes, and I found one that was almost too appropriate because it's very literal. So this is an old Chinese proverb. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. And what they mean by that, especially for the kids in the room, is that if you want success and growth in the future, you have to start building that right now. Now, the last thing that I wanted to say is actually directed at all of the kids here. Um, did you know that plants don't get cancer? Did you know that? Isn't that kind of cool as something that you could study here? Like, what is it that plants do get? How do they best thrive and grow? And using that as an opportunity to think about how the body thrives and grows and what happens. Well, we don't know. One of these kids in here could be that Nobel laureate that Councilman Kalos was talking about. And it might be because of things that they learned in this room and the creativity that was sparked by these projects. So well done to PS183 and to all of the leaders who helped to make this happen, as it can be such an inspiring place for a young scientist to find their creativity. So thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your special day. I also have Jessica Harvey to say a few words from our UF team. Hi, so as I look around this room and I think about the environment here, I think what a wonderful place to teach. And when I was speaking with, with you earlier, I learned about the curriculum aligned to the next gen standards and um, I was thinking about how when you have the right tools, you can do amazing things as a teacher. And when you have the right tools, you can do amazing things as a student. So I'm so excited that you guys have the right tools here. Congratulations on this incredible event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. On behalf of our president, Maureen Will, I just want to say again, thank you, Councilman Taylor. Thank you, PS183. Council member, when we first met, told me point blank, children's schools, that's my number one thing, and I'm not letting anybody or anything get in my way to make that happen. And boy, we found out that's true. <laughs> the S183, uh, I, there's something we know in the SAA, and it's called construction fatigue. I would assume that you have it, and you would like to see us long gone. They have more problems. I know, they have more problems. <laughs> We're not done yet. So just be careful what you ask for. And let's talk to the students. Students, everybody, I look around the science lab and I say, wow, maybe I would have liked science if I had something like this. I didn't. Would. But there are more lessons to be learned here. And I, my interaction with PS183 is about 20 years now. And I've learned something from this school and from well, at New York Sunworks, and I hope each and every one of you guys learned the same thing. Never say never. <laughs> Always learn that if somebody tells you it's impossible, tell them they're wrong and here we're going to get it done. This lady came to me 15 years ago and said, we're going to put a science lab on a roof, and I went, yeah, right. I was here about 18 years ago, and they said, we're going to put a gymnasium in that backyard, and I said, yeah, right. Well, they're both there, okay? So no matter what an adult or anyone in the college, if you get older and they tell you it's not possible, don't believe it. And look how many people it takes to get something done. Everybody in this room is very, very important. And one more thing, we at the SCA, we're in the education business. Yeah, we build the best schools in the world. Yeah, we do the finest re renovations in the world. It's building just on the world. We also teach. We have something called a mentor program. And sometimes it's not free. And sometimes it's really difficult to teach because people make mistakes. So we take minority, locally owned, women-based, organ companies, 
and we teach them to be full-blown school construction authority contractors who can then go on to build full buildings. And that's what this program did here. And the fact that we're standing here and that water's flowing means it was a success. And so sometimes it's tough and sometimes it takes time, but this gentleman puts the money up and lets us spend a little extra and a little more time to make sure that happens. And it happens and it's successful and it's a phenomenal teaching experience for us. So we're thankful, thankful to Miro and Shinor Engineering and Georgia and Mitchell Limano from the Outfit for helping us teach them and giving you the best thing that you could possibly have this experience. So thank you from our, from us and you're keeping us informed. So thanks a lot. <laughs> We have a few minutes to have my mom come and say a few words from New York Tumblr, please, because you are our partner in this lab, so please. Well, thank you so much. We're going to be very brief because we're all ready for the reading time, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, uh, as Mike said, and that's wonderful, this is a real community, how a community looks like a partnership, right? So, we have a wonderful school, parents, teachers, students, neighbors, uh, a council member representing, and an organization that comes and bring that together so we can all work for the future generation, bringing this 21st century technology, not only to science, but also to connect the concept of sustainability, what we, like, what, what we need right now in the 21st century. So we're going to cover with excellent teachers, because that's the key element for success. Uh, the mandated standards, I will mention, but we you guys will also be connecting to ideas of, of what, why do we are, why are we doing this? Why are we thinking differently? Uh, there's so many of us in the city. We need to feed our people different things. We need to use new technology, new ideas. You will create your own systems. You can explore so much in this lab and come up with solutions and ideas for challenges that you may have in the school or you may have in the neighborhood. And that is very exciting to us as partners to see and collaborate. And I'm sure for all the community to be part of that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's cut that in. Please stay around because our students are here to give you a tour of the lab and to explain all of the different systems. So please quiz them thoroughly. They've been well briefed. They're ready to go. Right before the Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's do the ribbon cutting.